Good Tuesday morning. The text is still the first chapter of uh, James, but boy, does he let loose here. Let me just show you something, okay? I'll read it to you. Blessed is he who perseveres in temptation. Now, you think of temptation as erotic temptation or greed or thing, and it means that, but it's more. I think it's a temptation to doubt, okay? That's what I think, given the context. For when he has been proven, he will receive the crown of life when he perseveres, you see, that that he promised to those who love him, who are faithful, see? No one experiencing temptation to say, I'm being tempted by God. For God is not subject to temptation and evil, to evil, and he himself tempts no one. God does not lead us into doubt, see, of any kind of temptation. Rather, each person is tempted when lured and enticed by his desire, then desire conceives and brings forth sin, and when sin reaches maturity, it gives birth to death. Now, you obviously can think of the, the allurement of the flesh. That's the t- typical line, okay? It's more than that. Not in this context. It got way more. He could easily say it. He doesn't. It's the allurement of vanity and pride and leads to doubt, and doubt is, de- doubt is deadly. When it comes to the faith, doubt is deadly. You see? Sadly, that's what does Judas in. He doubts. And once he doubts, he hangs himself. See? Once you doubt who is Christ, let alone who and what is Christ, one invites death itself, the loss of faith, and the wisdom that comes with the faith. One enters, as it were, the darkness, the darkness of foolishness, the quintessential opposite of wisdom. See, it's 7 o'clock in the morning here. So here's what he said. Look at this here. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers and sisters. And this is a famous, famous line from from St. James, okay? All good giving and every perfect gift is from above. See, that's that. That's Greco. That's Greek. All wisdom from above. That ain't, that's Plato in certain way, but this is personal. Unlike, for Plato, it was an idea of the good. Here is the person of the good, which is God, okay? God himself, but also you're going to see it. Christ, let me show you. Look at all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Okay? The wisdom from above. God illumines the heart, you see? With whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. That is Greco. That's Greek, you see? For the ancient Greek, change was... It was irrational. Only permanence and universality, okay, were permanent and was. So wisdom does not lie, as it were, in history. It lies in the purity of the idea. That's Plato. See? Okay? It doesn't, wisdom isn't found in change, but in permanence. Not in the individual, but in universality. You got to get all that. It's in the background. He's pulling on that. These guys are listening to this stuff. Had to have known what he was talking about. He's speaking into his culture, Okay? See, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. It's the pure elimination of the permanent good of God himself. That's the source of wisdom. Watch what he says. He willed, the Father willed, to give us birth. By what? By the word of truth. Who is the word of truth? Christ himself, verbum Dei. The word of truth. The word of God, you see? If this was St. John writing this thing here, okay, he would have spoken about it even more forcefully, I think. Maybe my two cents, okay? See, he willed to give us birth by the word of truth, Christ himself, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We are going to be the new creation. We will be the new creation. See how? By our, in a sense, rebirth in Christ, the word of truth in the wisdom of God, okay, in the wisdom of God in the flesh, Christ and Christ the church, you see, in our membership in the church, our baptism into the church, we enter into the word of truth incarnate, Christ himself. Father of all lights gives us access to that light through his word and his thing. You got to see, the, that's a prologue of John, okay? But in his word, but his word made flesh and dwelt among us. That's St. John's prologue. And in him and through him and conjoined to him, we are 
we are re reborn in the wisdom of God, in the wisdom of God incarnate. We are reborn in Christ. We are the first fruits of the new creation. And the new creation, okay, the new creation is in the sense the church. And the church in life and the church in completion in the resurrection of Christ in heaven, if you want to put that, that language. The new creation. In this case here, the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem is the church. And our membership in it is through faith and baptism. Faith that leads us to the church, baptism that incorporates us into it, purifying us in the wisdom of the cross, in the wisdom of Christ himself incarnate, the incarnate word, Christ himself. That's something that's powerful stuff that's here. To a Greek Jewish, a Jew, Jewish Christian or a Greek Christian at this time is not going to miss this language, going to get it. They're going to get it. They're going to see Christ not just as a historical figure, but as the incarnation of the very wisdom of God himself. See? A wisdom that draws us into the light through the light. And that light is actually the light of beauty and goodness, holiness itself. See? This, Dane James is playing hardball here. He is absolutely brilliant in what he's doing because he's combining the incarnation with the wisdom culture of the Mediterranean world, you see? And he's right. So John did the same thing, but much later, John did it in the prologue. To, an, to a Jewish Christian, especially to a Greek Christian, this had to be incredibly illuminating and uplifting. It is to me, because I have to say for myself, I look for wisdom. I'm a philosopher by trade, and I'm seeking to know the real. And I want to embrace the real with love. If you don't love wisdom, you will never be wise. You might be smart, but you won't be wise. You might be clever, but you're not going to be wise. And a very simple person who is uneducated, but who is deep in the faith, often has a wisdom that transcends learnedness. I remember, it's like 50 years ago, I was part-time chaplain in one of the hospitals in, uh, in Baltimore. And we used to go from room. I think I might have been a deacon because I couldn't have done much. But anyway, I was bouncing from room to room. And I went in room, and there was an elderly African-American woman there. And I forgot what she said to me. I forgot as I greeted her and we spoke for a few minutes. This was not an educated person. This was a very poor, this was a dirt poor pair. Uh, this hospital was in the center of a very poor area of Baltimore, believe me, okay? I believe it was Bon Secours, but I don't remember that. But I knew I was in the presence of wisdom in that woman. That woman was wise. God, she was wise. I can't remember what she said to me, but at that moment, I knew I was in the very real presence of wisdom in the flesh. That woman was extraordinary, okay? Was because she was learning. She was telling me, she, you know, Plato said, or I mean, I think it was Aristotle. Plotinus, might have been Plotinus. She just lay in that bed and spoke briefly to me about her life. And in that moment, I knew I was in the presence of the good, the beautiful, the holy, and the wise. She touched the real. The difference between wisdom and knowledge, knowledge can be abstract. Wisdom is personal. You can be as smart as all hell and be foolish. The world's full of, it's called, uh, uh, the world is full of very smart fools. Wisdom is different. Wisdom touches what is real and embraces the real through love and trust. You don't have trust, you don't have wisdom because you have to trust the beauty of the, of the good that you are seeing and that's what wisdom is, is to see and touch and love the real. If you're afraid of the real, you'll stand back in abstraction. You might make a good scientist, but in the terms of life itself and the wisdom of life, you're probably a fool. Or at least you're foolish. I have no doubt of that. Look at the academic world. A lot of brilliant fools out there, believe me. They are not wise, but they are brilliant. In their way. Good for them. But is it wise? I doubt it. Okay? That's just a thought right here.